Uh, nomenclature, it probably has more names than any other uh, book in the Bible, depending what Bible version you have. Some just call it Revelation, and do note that it is uh, a revelation, it's not revelations, uh, there was only one revelation. Some call it the Revelation of John. My personal favorite is the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Uh, in this case, divine not meaning God, but meaning uh, the, the theologian. Brian Harris is a divine, he has a, a, a doctorate in divinity. Uh, revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John. It's the only book in the Bible that claims to be a revelation of Jesus Christ. No other books make that claim. And uh, the important point here is the apocalypse uh, is a Greek word meaning to uncover or to reveal. So some Bibles call it the apocalypse. Uh, apocalypse is the Greek word. Revelation is the Latin word. The author refers to himself simply as John. He doesn't say, I'm John the Apostle. He doesn't write the way that Paul would. If Paul had written this, you, you would have known that it was Paul the Apostle. The reason there's some confusion is because 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John say they're written by John the Elder. Well, who's John the Elder? Is John the Elder John the Apostle, or is this a different John? So you get into that question. The traditional author of Revelation is John the Apostle. In uh, recent years, some people have questioned that and think that it was a different John. The main part of the case, well, there's two parts of the case to say that it was John the Apostle. The first part is that almost all of the early church fathers associate Revelation with John the Apostle. They're not too sure about 2nd and 3rd John, but since 2nd and 3rd John take up three pages, I, I don't think our faith is going to be shaken if it turns out that they were written by John Schwartz instead of John the Apostle. <laughs> uh, um, and the second part of the, the proof is in Revelation 1.9, it says, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. We've now narrowed it down by 99.99999% because his name is John. He's, he was exiled on the island of Patmos. And why was he exiled? because of preaching the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I think we pretty much narrowed it down that it was John the Apostle. Uh, Hippolytus <coughs> tells us that John was banished by Emperor Domitian to the island of Patmos. Uh, John again in Asia was banished by Domitian, the king, to the island of Patmos, in which he also wrote his gospel and saw the apocalyptic vision. Eusebius, Bishop of Caesarea, wrote to First Church History, says, Asia to John, who after he had lived some time there died in Ephesus, it is said that in his persecution, Domitian, uh, the Domitian uh, persecution, the apostle and evangelist John, who was still alive, was condemned to dwell in the island of Patmos <coughs> in consequence of his testimony to the divine word. So, uh, early church fathers all agreed that John the apostle was exiled to Patmos. They all agree that... Uh, uh, John the Apostle wrote it. Eusebius records that John outlived the Emperor Domitian, which means that after Domitian died, uh, John was allowed to uh, leave his exile. At that time, the Apostle and Evangelist John, the one whom Jesus loved, was still living in Asia and governing the churches of that region, having returned after the death of Domitian from his exile on that island. Irenaeus, in the second book of his work against heresies, wrote, and all the elders that associated with John, the disciple of the Lord in Asia, bear witness that John delivered it to him, for he remained among them until the time of Trajan. Gives us some idea of the apostle. Most scholars date the writing of Revelation at the end of the Lord's <coughs> reign, so 95, 96, we don't know for sure. Irenaeus thought it had been written earlier than that, maybe as early as 81. That seems an early date for it, but it's not impossible. The date, I mean, it was written in 95, 96. That would put John in his 80s. Correct. If John was just, to throw out a number. We know John was a teenager during Jesus' early 18 years old. Right. So let's say he was 15 in the year 30. 
So uh, okay. jump forward, uh, so 75, 80 years old uh, at the time. Could, do people still write stuff when they're 75 years old? What's the authority of Revelation? Does Revelation belong in the Bible? Irenaeus, uh, in his bestseller against heresies, quotes from 22 books of the New Testament. This is around the <coughs> is long before uh, Athanasius published his list in 367. So one of those 22 books is the book of Revelation. Uh, Origen, uh, second and third century, probably third, writing in the third century, connects Revelation with John the Apostle. John, who has left us one gospel, also the Apocalypse, he's also uh, left an epistle of very few lines. Perhaps also a second and third, but not all consider, uh, consider them genuine. But notice he's not questioning Revelation. <coughs> question so they're, they're questioning John 2 and 3 back in. The third, 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 third century. Third. Okay. Uh, the first, or at least the old, oldest existing list of books that somebody wrote down uh, in around 200 AD is known as the Moratory Canon. It's a fragmentary list, has 85 lines on it. Uh, Moratory is the uh, 18th century discoverer who, who found it. So, uh, Revelation's on that list. It's the oldest possible list of books in the New Testament that we have. And uh, Eusebius put Revelation on both his accepted and disputed list of books. Uh, when Eusebius wrote his church history, uh, he finished it by 325. There was no New Testament canon yet, so he published a list of accepted, rejected, and impious and observed books. And uh, perhaps for political reasons, he put uh, the book of Revelation on both his accepted list as well as his rejected list. Uh, as you can see in bold there, in regard to the apocalypse, the opinions of most men are still divided. But at the proper time, this question, likewise, shall be decided from the testimony of the ancients. And then he, he hedges further. Among the disputed writings, as I said, the Apocalypse of John, if it seemed proper, which some, as I said, reject, but which others class with the accepted book. And I think what he's really saying here is you're not going to get me, Eusebius, to make a public statement on this book, no matter what you do. I think that was the bottom line. The, um, the canon you mentioned the Moratory? Moratory Ken. How did that compare to um, Athanasius' list? Uh, it's, uh, it's the same except it uh, doesn't include 2 Peter, 2 John, 3 John. I don't think it includes James, uh, and uh, it includes the Shepherd of Hermas, but otherwise it's exactly the same. 167 years earlier. Right. And in Testament, as we know it today, uh, the earliest existing list we have is from 367, when Athanasius, the Bishop of Alexandria, published his Easter newsletter and announced that it's not tedious to speak of the books of the New Testament. Well, prior to this, there was no New Testament. There was just a bunch of books floating around. So here, uh, perhaps the most important bishop that ever lived, you'll recall, he was number two on my list of the 25 most influential people in the post-apostolic church. Uh, and uh, he lists the books we have in our New Testament, and uh, <clears throat> you can't quite see it there, but it says, and besides the revelation of John is the last 